hello welcome to this video i did kind of originally plan for the intro that i made when i very first started this vlog to be just what you saw at the beginning but i decided that maybe it would be better to just like introduce it myself now and then leave myself to kind of talk about the original plan for it so this is a reading vlog of me reading books that are all published in the 1920s and it covers quite a long time probably like six to eight months i want to say <laughs> so that's great yeah i guess i also maybe wanted to just speak briefly about vlogging and like i know that it's very popular for like everybody to vlog you know and, and do like reading vlogs and stuff. I think I personally really struggle with that kind of content because I'm really ill and quite dysfunctional and like on a day-to-day -day basis doing some kind of filming thing would I mean I guess it would just like show how dysfunctional I am and it also just wouldn't really work because I wouldn't really be able to do it which I think is also why I struggle a lot with this vlog and I struggle a lot to just like do things even if I want to do them you know that feels makes me feel kind of sad and bad about myself I guess so like yeah but I do quite like the idea of doing these kind of themed vlogs I like and I really love like you know my friend Amanda's vlogs Butch Poetics because they mean I get like a kind of glimpse into their life and I get to like spend more time with them so it's not that I don't think that like they're good content or anything I guess I just feel like it's hard to express like the reality of like being sick whilst it happens or I find it hard and because a lot of my dysfunctionalness is like I'm just lying in my bed a lot of the time it means that like vlogging that would be bad if I'm in bed like I can't put on a kind of persona and talk to people even if I want to yeah so I guess that's like the preamble I'm gonna try and kind of experiment and see if there's like a way that I can do vlogs and things I hope you enjoy this 1920s reading vlog and if you are sick in bed and can't do anything I see you take it away eight months ago Anna Marie <laughs> so welcome to the introduction of this reading vlog I guess. I thought I'd do a reading vlog that's based on reading books published in a particular decade. Yeah I think I'm gonna do this for like a whole month for each decade probably. And so we'll start with the 1920s which I only have four books to read. The first is Cain by Jean Toomer which is a, a text from the Harlem Renaissance and it was published in 1923 and it's been a book like a modernist book that I've wanted to get to for ages so. The next is actually non-fiction, it's The Journal of Catherine Mansfield which was published in 1927 and it's a Persephone Classics version so it has really nice end papers and Catherine Mansfield was a modernist writer actually who like Virginia Woolf said she was jealous of which is kind of interesting and she generally wrote in short stories and was bisexual and also very sick a lot of the time and I think her journal is supposed to be kind of amazing but also like quite uncomfortable because like it's a journal it's like very personal. Then there's The Quarry Road by Nan Shepherd, which I showed in a fairly recent video which is also partially why I thought I would start with the 1920s and then go to the 1930s and then 1940s and then I might go back to 1910 or to 1870 or to or forward to like 1960 or something depending on if I feel like I have a bunch of books from those decades that I would like to get to. But anyway, this is from 1928. It says, When Martha gains a place at the university, her achievement is met with a mixture of hostility and pride by her uncomprehending family. And it says more than that, but I don't want to read more of it. So, yeah. And then the last one, although this kind of counts as two, depending on whether I can track down a copy, but the, the last one is from 1929, and this is Passing by Nella Larson. And I have read this already, but I would really like to reread it because I read it. I think my second year of university which is like what three four years ago now and I really loved it I liked how queer it was and how cool it was and just how interesting it was and also it's so short like I would really like to read it and I would also really like to read Quicksand by Nella Larson as well which I think was also published in 1929 which sounds also really good but yeah depending on whether I can find a copy those are the books generally that I will hopefully be getting to I think that's everything that I wanted to say to like introduce this project I guess I will come back and update you with what I have read and what I'm thinking and etc etc as the project goes on. Bye!
update for this vlog. As you saw, like, I started reading The Quarry Road the other day, and I've still only read the first chapter of it, which was pretty short. But I also wanted to film this update because I thought I would actually mention this book, which is Load by Sherla von Reinhold, which I've been reading throughout the whole project. I think I started it before I filmed, like, the introduction to this vlog, but anyway. And I didn't mention it because it, it was published this year, and it's part of the Jacaranda books, like, publishing houses 20 in 2020, where they're publishing 20 black writers. I'm loving it so much, but the reason I wanted to mention it here is because actually it's kind of relevant when thinking about 1920s published books and modernism because it follows the story of like Matilda who's this kind of like queer black escape artist and who has these intense loves and transfictions on particular people and some of those people I think most of them are like from the 1920s and are, are modernists and stuff and one of her transfictions is a black modernist poet called Hermia Druitt and it's a lot about Hermia and and a lot about black modernism and and also about black queerness and pleasure and what beauty and and aesthetics it's just really wonderful but the reason I wanted to mention it as well is because the way the story is told is we get sort of excerpts and things from various different books and conversations and other texts about modernism and the effect of black modernist work on kind of mainstream well-known white modernists some of it is kind of tangential but I'm really interested especially because there's a section of just read which talked a bit about Virginia Woolf and talked about how To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf was inspired by Kane but I thought that was really interesting and like a fun link. If you are interested in like extravagant, camp, beautiful writing and sensual divinity and pleasure then I would really recommend this book. It's so good. I just love it. I'm gonna try and finish it today and um, I've got this much left. I also have been using this like angel postcard as a um, bookmark which both feels apt and not apt because I have this angel calendar which I love but none of the angels are black in it so I feel kind of sad that I can't use like a black angel postcard for this book that talks about black angels. I think my reading plan is to finish Lope, keep reading The Quarry Road and once I've finished Lope then I'm going to start reading Kane as well which I'm looking forward to. <laughs> but this update is mostly that I haven't read very much for a bunch of reasons. One is that like I suddenly had to do this thing which interrupted all of my plans and I'm still kind of recovering from doing that. Then another reason is that I got really obsessed with Critical Role and I've watched like 50 episodes in a month and like most of those episodes like four, three to four to five hours sometimes and that's sort of eating up a lot of my time so that's fun and nerdy for me. Yes and then I've also just been like yeah too tired to read but I have been reading a little bit of The Quarry Road. I'm in chapter four maybe? Yeah. One of the reasons I haven't been picking it up is because like I've wanted to be really present for when I am reading it because I'm really enjoying it. I love how it's written. I love the way that Nan Shepherd writes about nature and I also really like the way that she like intertwines this idea of like growing and like learning about your family through how they interact with nature and then also like there's a bunch of women in here who are really interesting and like the first chapter is called like Aunt Josephine Legat and she sounds so cool but then the other thing as well that has also stopped me from reading it when I'm really tired is that it's not all written in uh, Scots but I think the dialogue is particularly Scots I'm pretty sure it is which means that yeah I have to like think really hard to understand and sometimes I like have to look up things and then sometimes I'm too tired to do that so I just sort of like don't get it and then but I want to get it so like that's sort of also why I've been putting it off but yeah but the other day I read a chapter in a bit hopefully today I will do some more reading yeah and then I'll move on to like Kane maybe or passing I think also like because I'm now free I'm also kind of like wanting to read like a bunch of stuff and I just got access to a few more of the books that were in like storage and then also like Victoria is coming up which is something I would like to participate in and also well we'll see how successful I am but I would theoretically like to be participating in the readathon for women authored fantasy books that Jean and Jill is hosting. I don't have any books that are from the 1920s that are also fantasy books so I can't like combine those two very well so that's also sort of what's happening. 
I will hopefully update you some more in a bit when I've made some actual leeway and hopefully when I've finished the quarry run. Hello! I haven't updated this vlog in a very, very long time. Sorry if you can hear the boiler. But I thought, I mean, I thought I would just keep going and this vlog is clearly gonna like extend many months. I think the last few clips were maybe from September. I'm gonna read this book now. So I mean, I thought I would just like <laughs> lean into the shame, you know? But I'm about to pick up Passing by Nella Larson finally and read it. There's also, I'm th I think it's gonna come out this year, but there's also like a film actually that's being worked on of Passing, which is really cool. And I hope they show how queer it is because like it's very gay. But yeah, so I'm really looking forward to starting this. I haven't I haven't finished any of the books that I spoke about, except, except from I spoke about Low, which I have obviously finished. But yeah, the other books for, that I started reading for this vlog, I haven't. But I'm sure this I will, because A, it's short, and B, like, I'm in the frame to read it, you know. Also, can we all take a moment to be really sad that the sofa I had in this room that was here when I moved in was taken away from me. It was pink, it was very nice. Now, I just have a lot of boxes over there, and I did find this chair that was, like, in the rest of the flat and moved it in here but it's not the same and it's not pink, so very sad. Also, like, I just like to say, I mean, the outfits that I was wearing in the previous clips, great. Today, I'm wearing this blanket. <laughs> thought I would talk a little bit because I finished Passing last night. It's published in 1929 and it was a reread for me. Nell Larson was like a black author writing during like the Harlem Renaissance. So this book is about this woman called Irene Redfield and what happens when she like encounters and then re-encounters her friend Claire Kendry from when she was like a kid who has then has since not been sort of seen or spotted with anybody in the community that they grew up in for like 12 or so years and kind of like all of the implications and the associations and then also the feelings and consequences of the two of them being like re-entwined in each other's lives. It's a very short book, like it's in this edition it's not even a hundred pages but like I thought it was really brilliant. I think it's really beautifully written, I feel like there's not a single word that's like out of place. There's also a lot of foreshadowing which is interesting on a reread. I also always kind of wonder like what the point of foreshadowing is because you can only know that it's foreshadowing once you've finished the story. So it kind of presupposes that you are going to reread the book, which I, I kind of like. The passing of the title is specifically relating to the idea or like the, the concept of a passing as a white person, so being black but passing as white, and, and all of the like attendant difficulties and privileges and pains, all of that stuff that that then affords, and also like the, the hilarity of it. And obviously also like there's a way that passing is a kind of death, too. I mean it's also quite like a survival type thing as well I think. So in that sense there's lots of interesting discussions going on around race and also kind of this this like inside outside disparity but also like I would say that's also kind of deconstructed too. And yeah no it's, it's very interesting. I think there's like lots lots of interesting things talking in this novel that are still like part of the way that people talk about, conceptualise and experience race and racism today. It's also a very gay book. I mean in a subtexty way but I would also argue in quite like an overt way too, which is also kind of interesting in the context of 1929. You know, in 1928 you had like Orlando being published. And I did also read an article that was very interesting that was comparing or like connecting Passing by Nella Larson with Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, which was published four years before this one, and in the way that it represented like sort of the idea of kind of like the death of the soul as it relates to being able to express your sexuality slash being queer. I think the 
article itself was specifically talking about lesbianism but like queer by lesbian yeah i really like this i just would really recommend this book if you're interested in modernism black modernism if you're just interested in women like women's lives like i'd really recommend it i really really want to pick up and find i've like literally never seen a copy of quicksand which is a book that was published before this also by nella larson and rereading this has made me want to read it even more i think that's everything i wanted to say about passing thanks for sticking with this really bizarre reading vlog i will see you in another four months time no hopefully hopefully sooner but we'll see <laughs> i think next up is i'm gonna try and finish the quarry word i think that, that's the aim also i made a challenge on the storygraph website which is like goodreads equivalent that's a bit better than goodreads because it's not amazon owned i made a challenge on the storygraph that's reading a book from every year of the 1920s and so if you're interested in that that kind of thing then i'll link it below and you can obviously participate or not i think i've set it as like a uh, a five-year challenge that starts in 2020 because it just feels right because like 2020 1920 we should start then i'll just leave the link and you can join or not join if you want okay that is everything i wanted to say for this update so hopefully i will see you when i'm less in pain and with another book that i'm reading bye hi i thought i would update you on some reading and some useful information that i just found out because i was watching an iris messenger video and they talked about how there was a new audiobook on spotify of kane being read by audra mcdonald i think is her name and that's a book I wanted to read and I, I've said in some videos recently but you know whatever time is fake reading is really hard for me right now pain tired stuff so yeah that's really great for me here's the Spotify and I'm gonna listen and I'm gonna do some knitting I'm gonna knit my friend a hat which I have cast on but have only done like one round of and have a good time hopefully in another clip of this my fringe will be back to its normal color but I need to get some bleach but I'm still pretty happy with this cute look so I just finished and uh, I've lost my needle. I think like it was an interesting book. There was a sort of like end reflection on it by an academic um, and they described it or said one of the ways it had been described was like a composite novel which I think is um, kind of accurate. I definitely feel like a lot of fiction, I feel like the novel form which uh, people kind of conceive of as like an inherently white form, both in how it makes endings happen and in how it characterises particular people in various ways. And so when, when black writers, especially sort of during times when experimental writing and fiction is being produced and created, like right against the novel, but kind of still categorise their work as novels, which I think is kind of important still to do, to be honest, because I think they're sort of like important interventions in the way that like time and history and people and yeah, like kind of like personhood can even be represented and particular kind of shapes of lives, which I think people often forget are really massively impacted by like how they imagine plots to even happen. So like, I am glad I read it and I do did find it very like rhythmical. I think I much preferred the beginning to be honest to the ending although it's kind of split into three parts three main parts but i think i preferred the first part but i'm not really sure if i liked it but i also kind of feel like it's not necessarily the type of book that you would like or at least like for me i guess <laughs> and it's sort of yeah it's made up of all of these like sort of fragmentary vignettes some poems and almost like songs and sort of sort of short stories but I, i'm kind of hesitant to call them that because i don't think i don't really think that they want to be like disentangled from the whole of the book. I think if you're gonna read this I would definitely recommend listening to some of it at least because it is really rhythmical and like listening to somebody read it out loud 
is really useful in terms of like I guess sort of like understanding the, the meaning and also just like the rhythm of life and of the lives that it's representing. The only section that I liked I think was called Miss Fan? Is that what it was called? Fan. It was just called Fan. I also just watched Books by Lane's sort of review of this which I had sort of like bookmarked ever since I saw it to watch when I finally read the book <laughs> and I think it's a pretty good review especially the beginning which gives you some more context which also I would also recommend if you want that to listen to the like final bit of the uh, Spotify audiobook because they have like like I said before like an academic talking about it but um I'm not sure if I agree with everything that the academic said and I, I don't really agree with everything that Books by Lance said or anything but yeah so the, the context that is like given is sort of around like how this has been talked about as like the first book of the Harlem Renaissance which like in terms of sort of chronology it sort of is because it was published in sorry I'm like speaking with a needle in my mouth <laughs> because it was published during uh, 1923 or maybe 22 but which is pretty early and then sort of like people like Zora Neale Hurston and Nella Larson and Langston Hughes were really inspired by it or at least like definitely read it and stuff but the first print run was less than a thousand copies and it sold really badly and then um, in Lane's video they talk about how it then went out of print for like four years and then it was republished but again very small numbers were sold so the sort of like far-reachingness of the book is sort of quite questionable and obviously like sometimes that doesn't really matter because like the, the sort of the right people the people that it's most meaningful to and who are most like likely to kind of respond to it or use it as inspiration have read it and so they kind of make it live on in their much more popular work but yeah anyway so it's sort of all interesting I don't really have like a conclusion for this because like I think I'll be thinking about the book for a while but at the same time like I really don't want to reread it again <laughs> And I think it is quite a difficult book to get through. Also I didn't realise but I guess the sort of title of the book is a pun. Something that the academic who did the Spotify audio thing spoke about was like how it talked about the south. It's, it's a, a book quite a lot about the south as well like of, of America and the legacy of violence still there and also the violence continuing there but also in the north too but like the the academic kind of tried to like separate the past from the present in a way that I think the book is actively trying to like disrupt there's even like a line about sort of like the cane fields and how time or history doesn't exist in them so that's that so I'm going to leave the link to Books by Lane's review of the book in the description box in case you're interested in checking that out hopefully for this vlog I'm gonna read or finish one more book which is The Quarry Wood, Wood The Quarry Wood by Nan Shepherd, which I started as the first book of this vlog so <laughs> good on me and then when I finish that I think that's gonna be the end of it so yeah and I'll definitely update you with how my hat's going too an update. So I've decided to try and read one more book for this. So I know I said in a previous clip that like I'm gonna read The Quarry Road, which I am, but I am also gonna try and read Quicksand as well and that's gonna be the end of the vlog because I think for a while like that's those two of the, the main books that I'd like to read from the 1920s that I currently have access to. I'm excited for both of them. I've heard this is very different from Passing, which like I don't know if that's true but it will be interesting to see. And then yeah this one I uh, only got so far in but I think to be honest like it actually won't take me that long to read. I just kind of need to set aside some like 30 minute chunks and do that and then I will be on my way finishing and then hopefully you'll see this vlog during May. That's my plan.
Aunt Josephine made no overtures. She trudged leisurely on through the soft dust, her skirt trailing a little and worrying the powder of dust into fantastic patterns. If she spoke, it was to herself as much as to Martha, a trickle of commentary on the drought and the heat, sublime, useless ends of talk that required no answer. Martha heard them all. They settled slowly over her, and she neither acknowledged them nor shook them off. She ploughed her way stubbornly along a cart route, where the dust was thickest and softest and rose in fascinating puffs and clouds at the shuffle of her heavy boots. She bent her head forward and watched it smoke and seethe and ignored everything else in the world but that and her own indignation. But in the wood there were powers in wait for her, the troubled hush of a thousand fir trees, a light so changed, so subdued from its own lively ardour to the dark solemnity of that which it had entered, that the child's spirit, brooding and responsive, went out from her and was liberated. In that hour was born her perception of the world's beauty. The quiet generosity of the visible and tangible world sank into her mind, and with every step through the wood she felt it more closely concentrated and expressed in the gracious figure of old Miss Legat. She therefore drew closer to her aunt, looking sidelong now and then into her face. Beyond the wood, they were again on dusty road, and curious little tufts of wind came fissuring with the dust, and suddenly a steady blast was up and about, roaring out of the southeast and the long blue west closed in on them, nearer and denser and darker, inky, then ashen, discovered, <laughs> discoloured with yellow like a bruise. Um, I thought I would do my final update of this very long vlog because in the past two days, three days, four days, whatever, in the past like couple of days I've been very successful and I also thought I would brush and repart my hair whilst I do this because it's 2.30am and I want to be ready to go to bed. So I finished quicksand first, yeah and then I just literally like 20 minutes ago I finished the quarry wood and I kind of decided like to do that because I thought it would be nice to like sandwich this vlog with it so in terms of quicksand um I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it I found it quite like a surprising and yeah, just like a book that I felt was quite unexpected almost the whole way through, like I didn't really feel like I knew where it was going, which I guess is maybe partially the point for the protagonist, Helga Crane. I definitely, you know, didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed passing. I do feel like it gives you maybe more of a sense of like Nella Larson's struggles and like her experience of life. I mean, again, it's written like with this precision and sometimes a clarity and sometimes maybe less so but like I, I, I sort of still feel like that's very concerted. Is that like a good hot up? Yeah. And I just feel like I was left feeling somewhat unsatisfied, which is to say I think it was purposeful, but even so like it's not really a book that carries you in it in the same way that Passing does, in this kind of like sort of relentless continuance. With Quicksand it kind of stops and starts and it also makes you feel very stuck and Helga herself feels very stuck repeatedly. So yeah, a mixed, a mixed bag of an experience with the book. 
my hair is pretty long, so this is... <laughs> and then in terms of the quarry wood, well actually one thing about reading quicksand which I enjoyed was there was this moment where I looked up a word that was in it and the word was anent, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, and I looked it up and it said like concerning or like about, and then it said that it was Scottish. It was like an archaic Scottish word and I was like, oh that's interesting, like, okay, and then I kind of stored that information. And then when I was reading the quarry word, one of the words that is used in there, because it is the Scottish word, is anent, and I was like, aha! So there was this like, connection that was actually really lovely, and I actually, I, if I remember correctly, like they were published in the same year, 1928. Yeah, it was like sort of wonderful to be reading these two books at the same time about such different but also clearly very similar things and you know I, I mean the overall theme of both is perhaps like these young women becoming who they are and trying to figure out where to go with their lives and being affected by a variety of different issues. I found this book to be a very beautiful book. I cried at multiple points. I think it's written so beautifully and I do just, I, I know I said this before but I just love how Nan Shepherd writes about the natural world because she understands how like alive making it is and how like glorious it is to be Glorious it is to surrender to the incessant beauty of greenness and continual growth and decay. There's actually quite a lot as well about like death and caring and kinship. I really like how it represents family, kind of like adoptive family as well, or like foster family, which I didn't really expect. I don't think I would give this book five stars, but like at the same time, like I did just like s really enjoy parts of it. There were definitely moments where there were some language choices that I really didn't like and there's also, oh, wow, great party. If I remember correctly there were like two specific like moments where there was some racism that was gross and I didn't like. I think like it's set in the kind of early 1900s before this first world war starts, I'm pretty sure for sure, and it's about this girl who turns to a woman called Martha and just about like her life and her life choices and the ferocity of her spirit and the love she has for learning and for people around her too. There's a way with like quicksand, obviously because I read these two in such like close succession it's sort of hard not to compare them when I'm thinking about them but there's a way that quicksand always like holds you kind of like at a distance from Helga Crane's like actual kind of embodied experience in a way or I felt a bit like that especially even like something I noticed a lot was the way that the narrative calls her Helga Crane like her full name over and over again in a way that kind of feels very like separate you know like I mean I spent like uh, over a hundred pages with her could I not refer to her as Helga now you know like are we not that are we not familiar enough but perhaps we're not whereas with like Martha I did feel like much more of a closeness like within the narrative itself that is kind of like inviting you in inviting you into the secrets and the openness of being a person <laughs> it's just some of it is so so beautiful and I really like how it attests to I guess like the importance of women's lives and feelings so I got I've actually got this book because I got another book by Nan Shepherd which I got it not realizing it was the second in a kind of I think it's a loose series but like a series nonetheless and that's The Weather House and it's the second after this one so when I realized that I was like oh I have to read this one before I can read The Weather House because The Weather House definitely immediately um, enticed me because it talks specifically about spinsters in it I think so I was like well gonna read that. So yeah I don't know if the next book actually continues like Martha's story or if it doesn't. I feel like I've read quite a few or like a couple books that do feel like very much entwined this month so like this sort of made me think a bit as well about Maurice which I read or I finished like a week or two ago in the way that it just like charts like the beginning of somebody's life until they're about 25. It's also funny to be reading these books when I'm 25 and you know the past year being what it was it was like a very difficult year and like a, a year that didn't really feel like it had very much growth in it in terms of like traditional 20 something. Yeah I don't really know how that's relevant but I guess that's just part of the experience of reading this. Yeah I just feel really grateful for this book like I'm not really sure you know I feel like if I recommended it to somebody people will be kind of underwhelmed and also I didn't like I definitely don't feel like I understood all of it and also like there is actually a glossary I know I spoke at the beginning of this vlog about not being able to understand it very well <laughs> and there is a glossary at the back but it's not very good, like a lot of the words that I found myself checking like aren't even in this. Sometimes I just find it kind of annoying to like have to check back and forward and blah blah blah. The one thing I maybe wish I had done with this experience was actually just when I started reading this again after the months of having 
not I wish I had just like started at the beginning again rather than just kept going because I feel like the ending calls back to the beginning in a way and like I can remember that but I feel like it would be clearer and sharper in my mind if I had and I almost now I'm here like I kind of want to read it yeah anyway I'm very excited to read The Weather House which maybe I'll try and read next month who knows I think that's all I'm gonna say thank you for sticking with me if you have and if you've got to the end of this if you want to leave like any kind of emoji that's related to like the natural world maybe like the shoots emoji or like the leaves or a bouquet of flowers or a mushroom in the comment section you can do that that would be cute and yeah I will see you when I next see you I feel just so so like calm and contented after reading that book like it's just so lovely why did it I think it just touched my spirit so much thank you so much bye this is my new hairstyle obviously actually this actually looks really good like I should just I should just have my hair like this